my name is Eric Chung. Um, so this cluster for my project is on iris scanning programs or iris recognition recognition programs. And um, yeah, so biometrics right now, apparently, like iris scanning programs, especially, they're not really reliable yet. Um, they they produce many mistakes. Uh, there's like no way for the date for like the iris scanning programs to handle all, all the different irises being scanned. Um, it can't like it can't find the correct retina or the iris if sunlight is reflecting off the iris, uh, and like things like your eyebrows or like your eyelashes, those things get in the way usually of your uh, of retina scans. And that, that's a picture right here of how difficult it is. It's from the census movie. Um, yeah, but then the future of biometrics is looking good though. Like for for instance, for instance, uh, places like. Disney World and casinos use biometric scans to uh, to keep criminals out, but then they don't they don't use iris scanning programs yet. But then they do use stuff like face recognition systems, and um, yeah. And also, the iris is even though it's not reliable yet, um, the iris is one of the most well protected <coughs> organs. It's it's an internal organ in your eye, and and it makes it really really stable. So it will become one of the best types of security in the world, I think. And then, so then there's different types of iris recognition programs, and then I just chose three to talk about. So about the first one, it got eighth place in the Noisy, noisy Iris Challenge Evaluation. Um, I mean, so basically what it does is when it scans, um, it, deco it decomposes the image into three, into three uh, colors, red, green, and blue. And then previously, researchers have found that the blue, the blue component of the images always produces the much most noise, and no, noise is like where like um, noise is like where uh, the program can't really it can't it can't read the iris. It, that's what that's what noise is. So then, um, so then, so that so this program it cancels it, it just basically takes out the blue noise altogether, and it just looks at the red and green components. Which, may, which makes it a lot easier for the program to read the iris. But then this type of processing still doesn't correct things like perspective changes, illumination conditions, um, occlusion variable grade, and um, reflections on the eye surface. So, so researchers are still looking for a solution to those kind of problems, but they haven't really created one that implements both the, both the um, removal of the blue component and those type of problems. Yeah, but then, but then this problem also has a really simple algorithm, which makes it a lot better for it to use for like uh, for other for like, for like the more common people. And um, there's also another one that's a really really impressive, and that's this one that uses the one D log Gabor Wave <coughs> approach. So then this one, um, so most iris programs recognition programs right now they're really slow, and places like places like West Virginia University or Center for National Security. Even their their uh, iris recognition programs, they they work really slowly. And if if these programs work really slowly, people will start becoming tired or like fatigued. They start blinking their eyes. They start rotating their eyes. Their eyes start dilating or constricting, and that makes it really hard for the program to read. But then this program that they've made recently, it can actually produce a result in two to three seconds, which is an extraordinary result compared to other programs. And um, the main lights that it uses is, spe is specifically designed to read irises, the LED lights. And most programs beforehand, were, the LED lights were not specifically meant for, um, were not specifically specifically meant for reading irises. So it made it a lot harder for the people to like, to actually, you know, because the, because the lights were so bright, and it, it will it would dilate their pupils, like as you can see right here. The difference between dilated pupils and undilated pupils is really really like immense. So, and there's also an interaction unit built into this new one where um, it, uses, it uses sensors and a speaker to tell the person where to exactly to put their iris so that the program can read it much more efficiently. And it was designed at a reasonable price so um, more people could buy it. And um, basically, what, the way it reads it, there's four main components that it uses uh, capture, illumination, interaction, and control units. And then it uses very specialized LED lights and cameras to recognize the correct iris from a wide database of other irises. And then, yeah, this has proved to be very effective. 
and um, there are still a little bit of flaws, but it's pretty good. Like for instance, the human the human people subconsciously dilates when a light is reflected on, off of their eyes. So um, this type of light will it makes it hard for the program to read. So that's one problem that they need to fix still. And then the the testing that they used it wasn't. It, well, they need they need a more accurate representation of a real real world <coughs> database. For instance, there's a database called the CASIA Iris Image Database, which has over 2,255 different iris images, and that's a really really high um, highly um, it's a it's a really widely recognized database that is used for iris testing. And so if they if they use a database like this, they could have gotten a lot more accurate results. But they only tested their result. They only tested their program on about like 25 different irises, which is, you know, not really an accurate representation of real life world. And so then, but then, still, this program really, I think, um, is a much better program than other iris recognition programs beforehand. And um, there are still some iris recognition programs that I haven't mentioned yet, like. Um, occlusions by eyelids and eyelashes, iris localization error, nonlinear iris deformations, and this is like where your iris you could be on the move, or um, if your iris not is not in the correct location, then it's hard for the program to read. But then, so then these different programs really, really discourage the use of these iris recognition programs. However, this is a new program um, that can easily that can easily counter these problems. So then, if you if you if you can somehow look at your iris really carefully. There's these things called blobs, which the, which the scientists call, and these are things like um, these are things like freckles, coronas, stripes, furrows, or crypts, and these are different things in your irises that that make your iris different from any any other person's iris. And then um, so then this new program reads those kind of blobs, and then it will and then it will um, it will match it to another another iris in the database that has the same that matches of blobs with you. And then um, most programs right currently use something called an LFC, which is a local feature-based classifier. And then, I mean, the LFC itself is is an okay reader. It's it's still able to determine some types of distinctions. But then, if the image is blurry in any in any shape or form, then it won't, the LFC will not be able to read it because it doesn't have the correct. Um, what should I say it doesn't, it doesn't have like highly specialized um, recognition programs. So then, um, so to combat this problem, scientists created something called the GFC, which is a global feature-based classifier. And this specific job is to read fuzzy images. So then, this is thing where the program, it switches off between the LFC and the GFC. So then, um, pretend uh, if something is fuzzy at all, and the LFC can't read it, it will automatically contact the GFC. The GFC will read it for it, and then this this really makes it um, easier for the program to read because the GFC's sole purpose is to read the fuzzy images. And by itself, the GFC is very bad. Like, it's worse than the LFC. This, um, it won't be able to read images that are, uh, that are not, that are not um, fuzzy or blurry. But then when the GFC and, GFC and LFC are used consecutively, the number of errors produced really um, went down, decreased immensely. And um, so then the the way that the GFC and the LFC they look at the irises is this thing called blob matching, as I said before, and then it'll read all the it'll read all the um, and it'll read all the blobs in your um, match in your eye, and it'll and it'll match it to another iris. And if there's a certain number of blob matches, then it'll say that, that you are accepted or denied, depending on how many blob matches you get. And then so um, there are a lot of uh, security measures that we can take. For, um, hackers can get into um, the programs really easily because, um, and then if they can somehow hack or gain access inside the program, they can alter the data so then their irises could um, gain access to, or they can make it so that the database produces false negatives or positives. And um, most attacks on biometric processes are through Trojan horses. And there's eight, um, Trojan, there's eight ways that Trojan horses attack. Um, attack the databases, but it's really long, so. <laughs> and then, um, so then scientists still haven't created really a way to fight off these Trojan horses, but mostly they use um, encryption, which is like that picture over there. 
to, to deal with Trojan horses with it. But then another major problem that they have to deal with is the insider. <coughs> this bribery is a really big problem right now. And, and then um, in places like Disney World or casinos, and major terrorist group will pay a lot of money to get past an iris scan. And even small, like, tax on individuals also will skyrocket because even small scale thieves or robbers could attack an owner really easily to get inside a house that has an iris recognition program. And there are also a lot of clever ways that someone can defeat an iris scanning program. Like, for instance, um, some, pe some criminals have been, have been um, found using digitally, digitally copied iris printed on a contact lens. And this will get them past an iris recognition program. And it's not like a gun where the evidence is hard to throw away. The contact lenses are, you know, really, really small. And um, another method of attack is called a hill climbing attack. And this new attack tries to basically guess the iris by constantly changing the input to spread a very accurate match that will match another iris in the database. And um, there's also a lot of privacy issues with these type of biometrics. For instance, um, if a customer walks into a shop and then he finds out that all this credit card information or have already been shown to the employees, then his, then his um, bargaining abilities or the way that the employees treat the customers will be widely, really, really, really different. And um, places like hospitals or insurance companies could, could um, deny the patient some rights mm -hmm. if they realize that um, the patient has a really small, a really low expected long longevity or like he's, or like, yeah, he's gonna die soon. And um, so, <clears throat> so the most hackers will try to attack the biometric process at the client site or during the communication. And then so um, they use crypt cryptography. And um, but then this, but then cryptography is really weak. Again, if there's an insider, so then to counter the to counter the insider, they there's this thing called threshold encryption, where where this type of encryption it deals out a number of keys, like an n number of keys, and then. We, they, the program requires k number of those n number of keys to to for this gain access. So, if, for instance, if they distribute 12 keys, they require six keys to gain access. Then, six different people will need to log in or or input the key to get access to the database. So that just one person cannot get access. So that that's that basically combats the problem of the insider. Yeah. Um, so then, all in all, even though eye scanning programs are not really reliable yet, I really think that these different programs that are coming out, there it's going to get a lot stronger. And because the iris is so stable and well protected, um, I think it'll become one of the strongest uh, programs, types of security out there. Thank you.